Hello guys and welcome back to Combat and it's time for another tutorial and today we are going to create that you can have a portal gun. So we start going on the left top of your screen, go towards edit, project settings, tags and layers. So here we're going to have a few layers. The very first one that's important is the player layer. This is to make sure that you have objects, just normal objects with normal rigid bodies, which you just want to copy the rotation, the position and so on. Uh, for example, the velocity or maybe there are some other variables you want to copy and paste when you are just going to portal it towards another position. But with the player, it's probably a little bit different because you've got a mouse look or um, there are some other things you want, don't want them to be upside down and just walk always upside down and things like that. So we only need five lines to make it work with the standard assets uh, ratchet body controller but if you've got another player controller you can also use it just change those lines so it is just going to work for your controller also we're going to have a layer and it's called portal and that's to make sure when you're shooting a portal towards a position it isn't going to get inside the other portal and strange things will happen so to make sure that that doesn't happen you're going to make sure that you've got a layer that will make sure that once you hit it it will just return the function and it will don't do anything. We will come back to that later. So go towards your scripts folder, right click, create C sharp script and call it portal. So this is the actual object of the portal itself or actually the script that's going to be on the script. And it's going to make sure that once you hit the object, it is going to portal you towards the other portal. So we got a few variables. First we need to know which portal it is. So we've got two portals, the left one and the right one, or the first and the second. We are going to call them the first and the second. I'm going to create a pool to make sure that we know which portal this is. So first portal is going to be true. So this pool will just be given towards the function that will portal it and once it is the first portal you will send it towards the second portal and it's going to be the same if you are on the second portal you're going to be sent to the first portal. We also need to have a link towards the uh, portal manager and that is going to make sure for all that. Also we need a private variable which we can change so that's why we have searchable field and it is a string hit tag so this is to make sure that once you hit a wall with the portal it isn't going to uh, set the position of the wall towards the other portal and do things with that so to make sure that you only hit the right objects or only uh, portal the right objects we're going to use a trigger um, there are some reasons why we can also can use collision, on collision enter, or but I prefer on trigger enter for the port. So public void on trigger enter. Um, what means autocomplete, but you can just uh, put it on your script what you currently see in your screen. And the very first thing we're going to do is to make sure that we are only going on when the tag is the right tag so other dot tag if it isn't the hit tag that means we don't want to portal it towards the other portal we're going to say return then here we are going towards the portal manager and of course we didn't create it yet so we need to do it at another uh, time and we're going to say portal um, other object and the other object is of course the collider we just hit now we're going towards the second script we're going to create and again create a c sharp script and call it portal manager and this script is going to make sure that we are going to shoot the portals to the right position and also we can portal objects to the right position Alright, so 
for this, we are going to start with the function that we can shoot a portal towards the right position. I'm going to call it public void set portal. We got one variable and that's the portal current portal. So this is to make sure that we know which portal we're currently using. We are going to shoot and at the moment you are shooting your left or your right portal of yours of second. First, first thing it will do is send a ray test. And that's to make sure that we just know we are going to hit something. And if you hit something, we need to make sure that it's going to be an object where we can actually put it on. So for a ray test, we need a few variables. The very first is of course the position and the direction in which the ray test will go. And it means we need a sizable field because other scripts don't need to use it, a private transform player game. Because we are shooting, uh, so with a crosshair and so on, we can just say that it will be the player cam dot position and player cam dot forward. Then we also need to know which object you are going to hit because we need to run a few checks on it. So what we need is a private ray test hit hit and we're going to put here out hit so now when we call this inside this function we can just access the information for example the position the object and so on then the length you can say in the portal games you got an infinite amount of uh, where you can just shoot the range is infinite but for the performance it isn't that smart to actually put it on infinite because it will just go towards your whole scene and you don't want that because for example your scene is only 100 meters long or units so what we're just going to say is we can just change this to 100 and if your level is going to be bigger your biggest level is for example 1000 units by if you're going to the farthest point you can just say here 1000 then here we are going, also going to have a sizable field, a private layer mask, ray mask. And this is the layer mask of other layers you want to hit with this ray cast. The reason we are using this is to make sure that you can, for example, shoot through mirrors or shoot through glass or whatever you want. So that's why we got this. So the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to check if what you hit is indeed other portal because we don't want two portals at the top of each other. So if hit the transform dot object dot layer is going to be 17, which we just assigned, we are going to say we need to return. So nothing we need here will will happen. Also, it's very important to know that because it's a trigger, most likely you won't hit the actual portal, but there's probably some other layer you want to make sure that you cannot uh, hit that. So for example, you can also say um, if it isn't layer, for example, 10, which is the layer of the wall where you can place on those, for example, in portal itself, there are those white blocks and only on that position you can actually put it there you will return and you cannot do this but this is just an example so we have here the current per portal you're using and the very first thing we're going to say is that the game object is going to be set active and we're going to say true because what we're actually going to do we're going to add it within the scene and we're just going to assign it and we're going to make sure that once you just put it somewhere, it will just be set active if it isn't already active and otherwise not. You can just create an uh, if statement on here, but there's not really a reason for that. So we can also want to say that current portal dot transform dot position, so the position of it is going to be the same as hit dot point. Which is the point you just currently hit the object on. Also. We can say that current portal dot transform dot rotation 
is going to be same as polynomial dot loop rotation, and from that hit dot normal, which is the normal you currently hit of the face you currently hit. So now we can set portals with the scene when you're clicking left and right. Once we are calling this function, we're not currently doing that yet because we need also some other things before that will really work. For the portal script itself, a function we are going to create very soon, we are going to put the position of the object towards the other portal. But the problem is that if you do that and the player is exactly at that position, it will directly get called again and you will be sent to the other portal again and so on. So we're going to have a cooldown of 0 0.1 seconds. So a public e enumerator remove object. But we need to make sure that we know which object we are going to remove. And also, for example, if you know the portal series, you can run from the very first one, very first portal towards the other portal, and you go faster and faster. And at the end, you are always going towards the actual uh, portals, and it will be less than 1 point, 0 0.1 uh, seconds. So we also need to know which portal it is actually using. So system.serizable, we're going to have here a public struct. And the difference between a struct and a class is in a class you can have functions, and in, within a struct it's just to store data. Object portal. So this is the object you just portaled. And it's going to have a public portal, current portal. And it's going to have a public game object, current game object. So this basically means that we can just assign the object and the portal, and we can just keep track of a list, and we can just check if this is inside that list with the portal you're currently hitting and if that is you don't want to go on you want to make sure that player first go out of the portal before it can hit it again so we are going to have a private list of actually all the portals so object portal if you cannot do the list and it will give an error set here using system.collections.generic that's only with the other versions of unity that if you're still using them you need to add this line and you can use the list so private list object portal current objects is a new list of object portals so here we're going to start and we are going to say that we want to wait for some time so yield return new wait for seconds 0 0.1 seconds and here we are going to have the variable of the object of the portal we just want to remove once we'll say you can just currently use the portal again we are also going to remove it uh, once you are hitting the other portal so what we need to do is first we need to know for sure if the object is already removed. So what we are going to do is say that if the current objects here, that list, dot contains the remove object portal and if it actually doesn't contain it so we're going to put this sign right here we'll say yield break so we are going to return we're not going to do whatever we're going to do here because otherwise we will get an error if we're going to say that the current objects 
dot remove the remove object portal. So this function makes sure that we can now go through our through the portal and we're not directly cutting towards the other portal. And I really hope you guys liked it. If you did, please leave a like or a subscribe. And next week we are going on with the next tutorial. We still need some uh, work to prepare before it will actually work. But I still hope you guys liked it. If you did, please leave a like or a subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. Bye!